Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. In this one, we have a fun project. We're gonna be helping a horse who is, uh, her name's Daisy. She's a rescue horse, she's about four years old, and uh, she was saved by a friend of mine named Becky, who you're gonna meet in just a second. And uh, we're gonna help her get more comfortable with handling her feet so that we can get her feet done and also start preparing her to ride. Let's jump into it. Hi there, Becky Shuchuk here, and this is Daisy. Daisy is one of our rescue horses. She was rescued in February of 2021. They were shipping everything off of the kill lot in Oklahoma due to an incoming ice storm. Daisy had the cards stacked against her because she was about 200, 250 pounds underweight she was extremely. So as we continued to get to know Daisy, I found that she was extremely difficult to handle with her feet and her legs, and she needed a trim badly. So I tried sedating her. However, even sedated, she would have nothing to do. All right, so as you can see, um, Daisy uh, is pretty committed to kicking at something. So. There's a couple of different approaches. Um, we need to get her used to things touching her. And in my opinion, before we need to ask her to yield her leg, we need her to get comfortable and accepting of us touching it. She's not, if, if she's not comfortable with us touching it, right off the bat, if we try to hold it, pick it up for the farrier, that sort of thing, you're not really gonna have much of a chance. So she's gotta get comfortable with that first. Um, and so to do this, I'm gonna use this flag here. Um, it's an extension of my arm. And so this makes it a little bit easier for me to to reach her and she's gonna be pretty skeptical of this. You know, she doesn't have hardly any handling um, in general, um, but if we get her uh, accepting um, of us handling her feet and can work on her feet, that is actually gonna make a lot of progress for other aspects, um, like maybe starting her under saddle and things like that, okay? So you can see she's pretty leery of these things. And you know, so you can see this is more than just, just the feet, um, but she is really kicky with her feet. Now, as, you know, somewhere along the way, or, or even just from lack of handling, she's kind of learned to just go to her prey animal instincts to, to get away. So that's what she's trying to do here as I approach her with the flag. And she needs to learn that she's not going to get relief from this flag by leaping around here, okay? So I'm just gonna keep at it here. Very good. And I'm just waiting for her to soften. There she licked and chewed. She's finding a stance, so we'll take it away. Now you also see she's really inclined to wanna to face me. And a lot of horses that get halter started kind of later in life, um, in that process of trying to not get kicked and get a halter on them, we end up teaching them to get really sweet on facing the human, which is good, but it's also problematic because they kind of then just go to it all the time. So I wanna work on her getting more comfortable with me being on her sides here. Now, she's four or five years old and any horse that's that age learning to do this, ideally she'd be learning this as a weanling, um, which would, she'd be more you know, receptive to this. So it's gonna take a little bit more time. It's gonna take a little bit of effort to uh, help her understand this. Now, with her kicking at the flag before I even get there, one of the things I'm gonna try to do is, is take it on and take it off before she kicks. <laughs> and you can see, now, if she's gonna keep doing that, if, if I'm gonna give this flag here a good try, but if she's gonna keep doing that, eventually I need to put something on there that she can't kick off, okay? There we go. There we go. There's a little change, now I'll retreat, take it away. So I tried the on-off approach more than I'm gonna touch her with it and try to leave it there, which I wouldn't be able to do anyways because of how hard she's kicking. So the strategy that I'm gonna to try to use is bringing it on and then taking it off. See how she's already anticipating it? It's not even down there and she's like, I'm sure this is gonna do it. You know, and I don't know her whole story or what's been uh, tried with her, but 
I do know that some of the most challenging situations that I've ever had to work through in my career have come from horses that have had minimal handling or training and then had a significant um, injury or lameness or problem that had to have vet or farrier care. Because if they're in a little bit of pain, they are already afraid of humans and now we're messing with them and trying to control them to be able to get some medical work done. Um, that's a very difficult situation. And unfortunately, a lot of bad behavior problems come from that. There she's licking and chewing, she's softened. So what we're doing is we're teaching her. So it's like, this really is not about the feet at the moment. This is about teaching her what I would call a recovery strategy. Her idea is when she gets afraid or worried of something is to get very defensive. And what we're teaching her to do is saying you get relief when you try to recover. Very good. And now I'm also creating a pattern by just walking away and then reapproaching. So instead of just staying there, I'm kind of starting and restarting. And what I find is that horses can get a little bit, little bit locked up. So you see me trying to be progressive with it. You don't want to just stay in one spot. If I just stay here for three days, then when, as soon as I move it down a little bit, it's going to be scary. But if I'm just progressive with this flag immediately, it just starts to become no big deal. Oh, that was really nice. Again, try to move the flag before she kicks it. That's the name of the game. And then I'll get slower and slower with it as we go. Very nice. Now there's two sides to this coin. There's the confidence building side where I, I go slow and I'm petting them and you're just basically just asking them to stand there and do that. And we perceive this as the good part, the nice part. But to the horse, this is a lot of pressure because we're asking them to, to get more confident with something. You know, if you think about yourself, if somebody's ever asked you to get comfortable with something you're afraid of, that's hard. You know, even though you're not maybe doing a lot of work or something like that, it's hard emo mentally and emotionally to get comfortable with something. So what I want to do is I want to balance me petting her with this flag with some moving her feet, which you guys may perceive as being harder but to Daisy here, that actually might be an easier question to have. And then when I come back to uh, touching her with this flag, theoretically, this can be a little bit easier for her. So again, it's on, off. And I don't know about you guys, but to me, when I see this, I go, okay, yeah, it's, it's no wonder that getting her feet done was very difficult to do or actually impossible to do. I, I don't think they were ever, ever able to do it. And you can see though, you know, um, her feet, you know, you can't really see with her standing in the sand, but her feet have been, you know, kind of breaking off and wearing down more naturally. Becky's got some really big pastures. Um, but we'd like to be able to get her feet done and maintain that properly. So we need to be able to get to this, but we're gonna to try to set it up and do it in a way that's with her and for her. And uh, hopefully where she doesn't feel like it's being done to her. So let's take a look at these front feet real quick. So I'm just gonna move this around, kind of big. I just kinda of wanna get a baseline for where she's at with those front feet. So now I'm gonna give those feet a break and now I'm just gonna ask her to move around a little bit. You know, you don't wanna just drill for oil on something. You wanna kind of approach her retreat. So I'm just gonna ask her to move her feet and do a little bit of work here. And I'm, but I'm not just gonna go round and round. I'm gonna ask her for a lot of different yields. So we're gonna ask her to yield her front end. And you'll notice I'm using the flag while we do this. And this will hopefully, you know, it's natural for a prey animal to be able to move their feet. So just asking them to stand still for a really long time and not, you know, get a, get a chance to move their feet around is challenging for them. And right now where they're living, it's a smaller pen where 
they can move around, but not a lot. You know, it's not like they're running around on a couple hundred acres or more. So it's just good to kind of alternate between asking them to get comfortable with something and doing a yield. And this actually will end up creating a pattern. And you can see that I'm, I am touching her with it here and there as we go. Good, got the hind quarter yield. Now, when I move her around, I need to be active with this. I can't just be walking around. You know, we're gonna ask her to try and canter, change directions. And we're gonna create a little, and I'm waiting for her to get a little softer now with this. And once she gets softer with this, then I can go back and reapproach with, and there's a little softness. So a big part of horse training is reading the horse and see how you, right now there's no softness there. Her head and neck are braced up. Her, her nose is pursed, her, her eyes are a little stoic, not blinking a lot. Her movements are kind of quick and rigid. There's a little softness. Um, you can see it, the head and neck, see the lick and chew, the blinking more now, a little bit of softness there. And so by kind of stirring the pot a little bit, making sure nothing gets starts burning at the bottom, sometimes that creates opportunities to build uh, depth of confidence and depth of softness. So now we're gonna go back and approach here with, with touching her. And we'll start here at these front feet. I'm gonna roll this flag up a little bit. Notice, you know, there's an, a horseman's flag that I normally use that's a little shorter, but I didn't really wanna get kicked today, so we're gonna go ahead and use this longer one. And I might alternate between tools. You know, right now I'm using the flag and just kind of seeing what kind of results I can get with this. Um, you know, we've been handling her a little bit. She's been with us for a few days, but it's mostly been about, um, there you hear her having a really big release right there and blowing out. So now's a great time to be touching those hind feet because she's, she's getting softer, but she's hopefully having a dopamine release. There we go. It's interesting how much she anticipates it because before that flag even gets there, she's already doing it. So to me, to me that indicates there's more than just she's never been exposed to a flag. You know, it's either she's kind of learned to get relief or learned to push something off um, with her legs there. So that's that's kind of just an interesting thing to note. It's it's a little, in other words, it's a little bit stronger than kind of what the normal, if you just had a horse that hadn't had their feet handled, um, they would be more inclined to move away from the from the flag more than they would be to stand there and just kick at it normally. Not not every horse. And it, it could just be her, it's her thing that she's just got a strong instinct to go to that. Um, she is a little more what we call left-brained, which means she's a little more thoughtful and deliberate about what she's doing. It's not just reactions. Um, so that kind of makes sense. There we go. That's a little better. So if you compare that to the first time that I introduced the flag to her legs, that one, I wouldn't necessarily say it was a better result, but it was a quicker result. I was able to get to where I was petting her legs with the flag quicker than the first time. So now we're gonna go back. So I'm gonna measure progress by how quickly the horse will accept something. And then also by the quality of how well they're accepting. So I wouldn't say the quality was really any better there, um, but it was quicker. We got to that part quicker. Good. So again, I'm just creating a little pattern of trotting, yield the hindquarters, and then redirect. So we're trotting, we're gonna yield the hindquarters, redirect the front end. You know, you could do something else too. This is just something to move her feet, get her thinking about it. It's a little bit challenging. Cantering is, a, is kind of a more emotional gait. 
so I know I can bring her life up there. And then that helps me to release her to her handling her feet a little bit more. Good. So again, the logic here is the feet are the hard part for her. So ask her to do something else that's challenging. You know, I couldn't just come over here and ask her to do something real easy and create a pattern with that that would, that would not be releasing her to the feet. I want her to find relief with us touching her feet or her legs actually. So she's a little softer here. She doesn't want to move as much, which is good. There we go. Good. Okay. I'll walk away. And again, this looks very much like the same pattern I did earlier. I'm gonna kind of gather up my flag here a little bit. I'm gonna start uh, lifting my hand up, letting her kind of run into that halter um, if she goes to walk off every time. I would rather her, if she, if she doesn't like the flag approaching her, I want her, so you see how much rope, you know, slack there is in the rope. She can go, she can leave somewhere but it would be a better response for her to just go ahead and retreat backwards away from it than to go forward. Forward is just a very easy um, prey animal response to pressure. You know, it's just go faster forward. And so, so I'm not real inclined to wanna just let her, do, let her do that. Now, one of the things that I'm thinking about right now is that I'm pretty confident we're gonna need to put a rope on her leg and ask her to follow a feel from the rope. The rope is in replace of our hands and, and with the rope we can do it in motion and not be right next to them the whole time. I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to do that. But what I would like to do is prepare her for that as much as possible with um, the flag and things touching her here so that theoretically when we go to the rope, um, it's uh, not as big of a deal. It's a little easier, more palatable for her. The old saying, if you take the time it takes, it'll take less time. So it's like, instead of being in a hurry to do something that we're pretty sure we're gonna have to do, um, prepare the way a little bit. So again, I would say that was even quicker than, than the first time, or the, the second time, sorry. And notice I always, I try to start at a safe place here um, on her back or on top of her hip and then work my way down. Um, and again, you know, she's, she's just having a hard time rewiring herself to go, my first response does not have to be defensive. You know, I haven't given her a reason to be defensive. I'm not trying to grab a hold of that and hang on to it. I'm telling her you can move away if you need to, you can do whatever. But her first response, even just me thinking about it and putting my flag here is to start to get defensive. And so that's what we gotta do is just take our time and help her defense systems to come down. Now having said, I was just about to say that I'm probably not gonna get to the rope today, but actually that was looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one more repetition of that. And then I think I might switch over to the rope. So I think this will be the third time now that I'm moving her around. So a good, you know, three times, it makes a good pattern. I'm not real big on trying to use a ton of repetition um, uh, to fix, you know, fix something. But if you do something a few times in a row, it does create a pattern, and then that can be easy for the horse to know what's coming, you know, and then they can start to prepare mentally and emotionally for it in a positive way. So it's, it's kind of like creating a positive anticipation. And that's what we're trying to do. Right now she has a negative anticipation. Um, but so by moving her feet around, and you can see she's getting a little lazier here, a little stickier, which is great. Uh, she, it, means, it just means she's relaxing more now.
So at this point in the session, I'm realizing how big of a challenge this really is for Daisy. This is a pretty severe issue. And when a horse is willing to kick out at something the way she is, she actually is getting to the point where she feels threatened by it. So horses normally, if they feel panicked, they'll use their flight from fear instinct and they'll leave the situation. She's hunkering down and fighting and kicking it. So this first session, um, I was kind of gathering information and now I got to go and I'm going to reapproach it. And I think I'm gonna try a different approach with maybe getting her to give to pressure from a rope. All right, so I'm back here with uh, Daisy and today's day two of tackling her, her feet prep. Um, yesterday I learned a couple things. Um, one was that the flag was just a little bit too much for her to handle without kicking at it. So if we were to continue just doing that flag over and over and over again, it might get better, but there's a good chance that we're actually reinforcing her kicking because that's what she was doing. So you gotta be careful when you're training a horse that you get the equation right where you end up spending more of the time doing what you wanna be doing and less time doing what you, what you don't wanna be doing. So like in this case, kicking at the flag is what we don't wanna be doing. Um, having her legs be touched and handled without kicking is what we're after. So we're gonna kinda take things to the next level here. And I just, I feel like this is kinda where it needs to go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a lariat rope around her hindquarters and let her just pack that around. Now, hopefully I can get her used to that a little bit before I put it on a hind leg. Um, so this is gonna hopefully get a little bit more deep, um, build a little more depth of it, and um, we'll see how it goes. So you can see she's just, she's real ready to kick as soon as anything's, anything's touching her there. So what I'm gonna do here to start off with is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put that over her back. And we're just gonna let her wear that a little bit. And uh, what'll happen is as she goes around, it'll touch her in the hind legs like that. Now that's interesting because that's touching her leg, but she's not too bothered by it. And so, you know, it, not that it matters, but I think some of the stuff with her feet seems to be a bit man-made where she kind of learned to, to defend herself there and learn to kick. Um, you know, because like if I'm not in the equation, if I'm if I'm uh, back here, you know, she's not kicking at it. So that was interesting. So this is very interesting that she's not kicking at this rope being on her. And either that's because she's used to the ropes, or um, it's just different enough from the flag. But that's very interesting. Kind of surprised to be honest. I did not see that coming. I thought I thought I'd be lucky to just keep this rope on her, just draped over her butt here, and instead we're getting zero reaction. So, you know, maybe maybe we moved the needle more than we thought we did yesterday, or uh, maybe it's something different. We'll see. It's amazing at how good prey animals are at not stepping into a loop. <laughs> there we go. But I can't believe she's not kicking at the rope with it touching her legs there. So notice I got the rope high above her hock. There's a couple reasons for this. The big one is if it was down low on her leg and she starts kicking at it, my hand would be getting kind of jerked all over the place. Did you expect that, Danielle? No, <laughs> me neither. Uh, Danielle is interning with me and she's been uh, playing with her on the ground as well. I think we're both kind of shocked that she's not kicking at the rope a bunch. So the first thing I want to do with the rope on is just make sure she can wear it. You know, and be okay wearing it, but she seems totally, totally chill with that idea. So now I want to put a feel on it. And then all I want her to do is stop. Now she stopped, but she's bracy. You can see her, her, her um, kind of resisting her leg. Now, and you got to remember, if we're trying to get her feet trimmed, we have to, we have to hang on to her foot pretty well in order to, to get her foot trimmed. Now there she softened, so I'll let it go. You ha the farrier has to be able to hang on there pretty strong in order to, to trim the foot out and do a good job. Uh, they, you know, they can't just have it barely in the air and just <laughs> brush the sand out of it or something like that. It's a little more in depth than that. So she's gotta be able to handle uh, her leg being controlled for an extended period of time, even if it's just a minute or two.
Well, I'll be. What the heck, Daisy? Are you fixed? Interesting. Wow. That is something. She didn't kick a single time with the rope. Not like, not a once. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I, like, I don't know. Did we fix it yesterday or is it like, is it just connected to the flag? So let's go ahead and work this uh, other side here a little bit. Oh, so this side's a little bit more scary. I'm just kind of swinging on her. I'm just trying to get her comfortable with things moving, you know. Eventually, we're going to try to take a saddle pad and throw a saddle pad up on her back or something like that. Get my ropes fixed up here a little better. And what, what a horse like her is, what's tempting to do is, like, sneak around them and just go slow. Because if I go slow, I can get where I want to be, you know, with a little less um, movement and fluff around it. But that's not preparing her, you know, for, for life and for anybody to be able to do it. And so, if you know, our job as trainers is to prepare the horse for life and for other people handling them that may not be as knowledgeable or experienced with horses. <clears throat> and what's an interesting concept with these rescue horses is the more value we add to them by getting them to be gentle, by being able to trim their feet, by being able to catch them, by trailer loading them, riding them, all that kind of stuff. That all adds value to the horse. And you will see less and less horses in rescue situations with the more training that they have on. So this is a really, really cr crucial element to um, be able to add value to these horses by training them. Now this particular horse already won the lottery by having Becky pick her up. And uh, being at Windy Hill Equine Rescue, that's a, a, an incredible facility and it's a great place for them. They get these nice big old pastures to, to romp around in. <clears throat> so she's already got it made as far as that goes, but would it be even better for maybe more fulfillment in her life is to be able to get gentle enough where somebody wants to adopt her and uh, have them be, have her be their horse. Okay, so the idea is to let her pack it around and move with it on her. Now, this horse has learned to get more comfortable with people in front of her nose, which is a really common uh, situation that comes up with rescue horses, which is basically just horses usually that haven't been handled a whole lot or handled poorly. It doesn't even necessarily mean they were abused. It just means that they, you know, they learned some things they didn't need to know because they were more nervous horses or you know, too old, maybe somebody, you know, didn't get them gentle when they were a younger horse, which would have been a lot easier. But anyways, they learn to find relief facing the person. So you can see that's what she's trying to do. So before I ask her to stop with it, I want to be able to drive her off, yeah, and let her find forward over there. But I'm really impressed that she's handling this so well. I mean, that's like, that's just very good. Okay, Danielle, can you go ahead and bring me the flag? So I'm gonna try a different strategy today. So if she kicks at the flag, what I'm gonna do is hold on to the rope. And uh, that's the, the game that we're gonna play. Very good. So basically now, if she were to kick at the flag, I would hold and put a feel on the rope. So instead of her just kicking at the flag and the flag goes shooting off of her and then there's nothing happens, now I would hold the rope and so now there's pressure on while she was kicking. When she stops kicking, the pressure goes off. So to me, I think that that would help bridge um, her understanding of the flag a little bit more. Um, now there she pulled her foot up and I'm not gonna put pressure on that. I don't mind a horse knowing that there's room for them to move and, and be, be okay if they move away. That's a different thing. So just pulling your foot away is different than kicking. Kicking is like that one, it's 
gonna hurt the human, you know, for trying to handle her feet and she kicks. Um, but I want, I want a horse to know that they can move away from pressure if they feel danger, as long as they don't like completely bolt away or leave or do something that would be dangerous, but. That's quite a bit better, huh? Interesting. I haven't put the gloves on today. I was I was ready. I thought this was going to be a lot more exciting than it's turning out to be, which is great news. That is just wild. Who saw this coming? Not me. <laughs> it's also possible that as I brought the intensity up yesterday, now that we're slowing, now like, so yesterday she started it, okay? I finished it, she started it. Today, I'm trying to like instigate it, but I'm not, I'm not going to that, I'm not making her go to that intensity. So she's choosing not to go there. You know, but I mean, look at this. Like that is, so in a surprising turn of events, um, you know, yesterday's lesson, I did what I could with it and I tried to leave her in a good spot, but I was thinking to myself that that was not going to be the best strategy. I was thinking that I needed to put the rope on. So it just goes to show you to stay flexible and you know, you can't, it's an important thing to not make too many assessments and judgments with a small window of time. You know, maybe a large window of time would be like a hundred hours. So a small window of time is an hour. And some people might think, you know, they could make a full assessment and everything um, from less than that. You know, you guys have probably seen people on the internet. They see 15 seconds of a video and they're an expert on the entire situation. <laughs> and they have, they've literally just saw one glimpse of what was happening. And so as a professional, it's important for us to stay open-minded and, and read the whole situation and gather as much information as possible. And so um, I chose to go with the lariat rope today to, to test that out. And then it turns out that the strategies that we were using yesterday actually worked better than we even realized. And so we're gonna keep going on those, um, on those plans. But um, at this point here, I'm gonna hand Daisy back to uh, Danielle so Danielle can continue her development. And um, I'll just be uh, waiting in the wings, ready to go if need be. So I just want to interrupt this video real quick to tell you a little bit about Becky. So Becky is one of the kindest, biggest hearted people I've ever met in my life. She does a lot of things to help people and help horses. And uh, she runs this Windy Hill Equine Rescue and it's a pretty, pretty amazing operation they have there. I really like everything I've seen and, and done there. And I go there um, in the fall for a week or two um, every year. So uh, Becky is really close to my family and um, I wanted to do something to help her out. And I know that this year they've had a drought in Texas. Um, I think they've gotten some rain recently, but the hay crop has really suffered. And so hay prices have gone up and there's hard, hay is harder to find down there. So I wanted to do a bit of a fundraiser with this video to try to help Becky out um, feeding some of those horses through the winter. She's got a lot of rescue horses at her place. And I would encourage you to go to her website and check it out. And um, we're gonna leave a link in the description that if you wanna donate uh, to Becky, every little bit helps. So whatever you're able to donate, Every dollar of it goes directly to the horses and taking care of them, getting more horses rescued and getting the horses fed and taken care of. So if you're able to, we'll leave that link in the description. Let's get back to the video. Hey guys, so I'm back here with Daisy, and um, as you guys can see, we were able to trim her feet. And I wanna show you um, some of the, cause we didn't get it all on video, all the training sessions that we did. I wanna show you some of the key things that we were doing. So one of the first things that was really key that we were doing is we would be, every time that we would ask her to do something difficult, like say cantering a circle, or maybe doing some obstacles, or preparing her for saddling and riding and that sort of thing, we would then release her to this position of standing back here and rubbing her hindquarters, okay? We would release her to this position of just petting her hind leg, just getting her really good here, okay? The other thing is when she would go to kick, it's because she felt threatened by it. 
So when a horse is scared of something, they'll try to flight away from it. They'll try to leave it that way. She was to the point where she felt threatened and to the point where she would kick, okay? And so two things that were really important for actually holding the foot up. One is that at any time that she wanted her foot back and she kind of protested, we would go ahead and let her have her foot back, okay? So we'd have it here, and if she were to try to pull it away at any point, I would let her have her foot back, okay? She could just pull it away. But there's a catch. Once you have your foot back, now we're gonna make that thought uncomfortable. So this is now where we would step away from her and put a little pressure on her with the lead rope and make this a little bit uncomfortable. I'm not gonna do it much right now, just so you guys can kind of see there, but it would be basically a move like that and then I would put her right back to wherever she was parked and get right back in here and start petting again. And release her right back to this position. And so the idea is you can have your foot back at any time, but it's gonna, it's, you're not gonna go and take a break when you get your foot back. We're gonna make that a little bit uncomfortable. And that's what's really allowed us to have this breakthrough with her with her feet of being able to handle um, us picking up her feet without kicking all the way to being able to uh, go ahead and get her feet trimmed. So really proud of the progress that she's made. And uh, we also have some video clips to show you guys of some of the progress that we've made riding her. And uh, she's made a lot of progress. So Daisy is going to be available for adoption. If you guys are interested, you can get a hold of Becky, uh, Windy Hill Equine Rescue. Um, she still needs some more training, but I think um, she's a sensible horse and has a lot of potential. She's obviously very pretty with her Palomino color. And uh, she's looking for her next uh, forever home. So if you guys are interested, get in touch with Becky. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you guys on the next one. Daisy's first official ride, looking good. Just kind of right in that between of us except the human and starting to pepper in a little bit of accepting the rider.